yes, I'm cleaning up the boards and when you do SM SMD components you get a lot of flux or you need a lot of flux and therefore they look dirty but they are not really dirty they are just full of flux so they are not burnt um, so I put them in a bath like this and then I have uh, isopropyl alcohol, alcohol and a brush and uh, usually I use acetone or nail polish, but um, <laughs> that hurts my respiratory system, so no, I think this is better. It's a, it'll be a much slower to work with the alcohol and the flux, to remove flux, but uh, I think it's worth it. So, And also, if you look closely, you can see all the tiny solder balls up in there. That's from all of these that I've cleaned. So this is three six nine. So this is the tenth. So you can imagine when you have twenty of these, how many solar bolts. So why is that important? So that's another reason for removing flux. One thing is that if you use flux that uh, conduct this side here, this R two and R R one, those are the sensing for the voltage sensing resistors and uh, if you have flux around these then this uh, device will not cut at the right uh, voltage that I have specified so um, it's uh, these solder bolt blow bolts they are trapped inside flux so when this heats up for some reason if it's a hot day or uh, yeah there's a lot of current going through here then these polar bolts can go loose and uh, short stuff in here. So, yeah. Okay, welcome back. And uh, excuse me for all the noise in the background. So I have been uh, making a lot of savers. Actually, there's more of these because I've tested some already. And uh, what I want with this video is to show you an addition. I have made because it's maybe not that obvious but there is something called uh, contact resistance which is very important and especially when you're using a test jig you can get a lot of contact resistance when you do a lot of in and out plugging so and also uh, if you notice you can see that I have uh, the plus and minus on both sides such that I can uh, measure on both sides and these are soldered directly onto the uh, contacts so therefore I can measure um, voltage drop over the whole saver so I can have a control over that so what I have uh, discovered before is that uh, I have had problems with actually that so uh, it could be up to 100 millivolts drop and uh, that's too much really so so I've used uh, before I used this to smear the contacts and uh, that's not really good because it's not good for plastics so <clears throat> but it's really great for mechanic stuff so I bought this one it's called uh, contact 61 from contact Chemi and it's anti-corrosion lubricant lubricant for contacts the only problem I have with this is uh, it really hurts my throat so yeah I've uh, opened the window on full blast so yeah so this is my test jig and um, I have another video of that if you want to know more about it I'll link it down below and here are the test probes for the meter you see and I set it to voltage and the addition I do is that I, uh, I apply lubricant such that uh, I, <laughs> I hope it will also um, help people that have uh, high or dirty contacts in their Commodore 64 or power supply connectors so so let's go see how this works so the first thing I do is of course I turn on the power so sorry about that 
hit the over voltage protection, no problem. So what I've done is that I uh, connected twice, and the reason for that is to uh, wipe off any oxidation. Oh, here you can already see that we have uh, yeah uh, one amperes. So that's because the load is on. So let's switch off the load and see what happens. And also. Let's measure voltage. So this is the uh, negative, so put it on the negative and the positive. Let's put that up on the positive. So it's still running, so no problems. Here you can see voltage is climbing 5.47 and a half. Alright, so that's the upper limit for this uh, unit and then. 5.42 something like that <laughs> so the next thing I test is the contact resistance and also how it performs on the load so you can see that the voltage has dropped some so that's natural and let's see what's the upper limit on the load and if there's poor contact this value will be really high so maybe 5.6 even so but this is good so, so now you can see also see that it cuts the power. That's okay. So now that works okay. Um, let's turn off the uh, power to the jig. So the next thing I do, I move the positive over to the negative on the opposite side. So what we are measuring now is negative to negative. So basically we are measuring power, uh, uh, voltage drop over the negative lead here. So, so when I switch this on, it will take a few moments and then you will see we get 1 amperes because the load is on. And you can see we have 10 millivolts. That's really great. This value was up in 40 and 50 before. So, and this is working every time now because I um, I lubricate. And what about the positive? Let's, let's move it over to the positive. See the voltage drop across that. So this is also called a uh, four wire setup. 35 volts, millivolts. You can also set it to millivolts here to get a more precise, but it, it's not that important. Well, let's turn off the load now. Um, the reason why it's higher is because we have uh, a MOSFET in here. So, and the MOSFET is about 25 milli ohms. What is the total resistance then? Well, uh, if I switch on the load again, you will see that we have about 1 amperes going through the, the red wire and then returning in the black wire. That's what we are seeing on the meter. Uh, so if we are measuring 35 millivolts, then you can uh, divide that by 1 amperes and you get 35 milli ohms. So if it's uh, about 25 milli ohms in here, in the MOSFET, then the rest is uh, providing that plus 10 milli ohms that we saw on the negative also. So getting really hot there so I'm switching off uh, so the Commodore only uses two pins on the power supply but this one has five uh, so it doesn't really get any better it can't be better than it is without this one however uh, the voltage drop is minimized because uh, you have two 5 volt pins and then you have three ground pins and also the input of the Commodore 64 utilizes this so but on this side I still have the same problem with the only two power pins so yeah so the next thing I test is uh, continuity so I put the meter on ohms and I switch off power because now I don't need power so I switch over to the brown which is 9 volts brown there's nothing here, so that's great. Sometimes I get uh, mega ohms. That's because I have some flux residue in the uh, 
some leakage. It's not really a problem. Like 40 megs, I don't think that's a problem. So, brown to brown, that's a good connection. And see if there's any short circuit to uh, sunset yellow. Nothing there. So there's uh, there's good contact between yellow and yellow. So that's uh, reassuring. <laughs> So this device is okay then, so I'm happy with that, so I can go move on to the next, just uh, remove it. So now I will show you the one I found that wasn't working, so I can have a little fun with that. Always fun to find something I have screwed up, let's see, <laughs> figure out why the... So, so this one is not working okay, but you can see actually there's no connection between uh, yellow and yellow here. Uh -huh. the yellow and brown is uh, is mixed up. So now it's brown brown, nothing. Brown yellow. See connection. What about red? Nothing, black, nothing, black, orange. Oh, there you see the residue I was talking about. Um, so that's well up in the mega ohms, no big problem. Um, of course, I could have cleaned it one more time, but... Uh, okay, so I'm happy with that. So, uh, <laughs> what I did to figure out what was wrong here. You see there's no light. When I switch on power, there's nothing here. So so then I started trying to figure out, measure voltages, for example, uh, we have uh, 5 volt coming in, no problem. Do we have 5 volt out? No, we don't. What do we have then? on the output minus 5 volt <laughs> so somewhere here I don't know if it's in this or in this connector I have screwed up so I will open this one first I'll figure that out so I have a lot of savers here so if anyone interested just let me know so I'll cut the video here because it's getting long and I also was thinking about maybe changing this design and removing the cable. I've seen another design. He has a uh, board with a two connectors, so you just plug it between the power supply and the Commodore like this, just without the cable. So, because I use a lot of time making this, it, if it had been just solder the cables, strip the wires, solder the cables, it would be fine. But in here. I have to connect pin 2 and 3 together and then solder which isn't perfect and then I can't have a sleeving over it because it's a bridge actually soldering up that board with SMD components is really easy, it's fast believe it or not, that's not really a problem however when I'm going to have the cable in there it's also a bit fiddly so I'm thinking about moving on to a single board design so I don't have to spend like five days making 20 so <laughs> yeah that's really how long it might take to make 20 so Hmm. 
yeah okay thank you for watching so see you another time bye bye